Lysosomal storage diseases are a relatively uncommon composite of diseases occurring in both animals and people. This presentation focuses mainly on lysosomal storage diseases in animals and will also explore not only diseases with aberrant lysosomal carbohydrate metabolism, but will examine the causes and clinical manifestations of other forms of lysosomal storage diseases. This presentation will highlight some of the clinical as well as morphologic changes that are common manifestation of the diseases and will also examine some of the latest treatment modalities employed in human medicine. Lysosomes are highly regulated metabolic degradation centers of the cell and are critical for the processing of protein, complex carbohydrates and lipids. Indeed, there are over 60 enzymes that will digest macromolecules into the constitutive components. Lysosomes are also important structures involved in maintaining cation and anion homeostasis and balancing intracellular pH. As such, it seems reasonable that impairment of the lysosomes could lead to cellular dysfunction if the impairment is both chronic and severe, subsequently leading to cell death. The image demonstrates some of the cellular processes involved with the degradation of macromolecules. Extracellular materials are internalized by either endocytosis or phagocytosis and form endocytotic vesicles following a series of maturation processes. These vesicles then fuse with lysosomes and the products of lysosomal degradation are then transported to the Golgi apparatus and released into the extracellular medium or utilized within the cell. A similar process happens for damaged intracellular organelles. These damaged organelles form autophagosomes that then fuse with lysosomes to form autolysosomes. The products of lysosomal degradation enter the Golgi network and are either released from the cell or reutilized within the cell. One could imagine that lysosomal storage diseases have plagued animals and people for eons. However, it appears that lysosomal storage diseases is a relatively new clinical entity and research into understanding the disease is a burgeoning field. Indeed, one of the first clinical cases of lysosomal storage disease was described by Dr. Gauthier, a French physician, in his 1882 doctoral thesis. He described the clinical manifestations of a middle-aged woman with splenomegaly and thought the enlarged spleen was associated with splenic cancer. This was the first recorded incidence of lysosomal storage disease, and it was not until the 1960s when Dr. Roscoe Brady identified the biochemical cause of Gaucher's disease as a glucocerebrosidase deficiency within cells. Over the last several decades, there has been a marked increase in understanding the cause of the disease, its inheritability, and treatment. Lysosomal storage diseases are a collection of inheritable metabolic disorders that affect people and animals. Presently, there are over 50 characterized lysosomal storage diseases in animals. In general, the diseases are categorized by the chemical composition of the metabolic byproducts. Gauthier's disease is an inherited disorder associated with the reduced or lost activity of the beta-glucocerebroside enzyme, an enzyme important in the metabolism of glucocerebroside into glucose and ceramide. There are three clinical manifestations of Gauthier's disease in people, and these include type 1 Gauthier's disease, um, also known as the non-neuropathic form. This is the most common manifestation of the disease. Type 2 Gauthier's disease, also known as acute infantile neuropathic form of the disease, and type 3 Gauthier's disease, which is a chronic neuropathic form of the disease and is considered less pathogenic. The electron micrograph image shows accumulation of tubular material with a clockwise rotation within the bone marrow histocytes. Crab's disease, also known as globoid cell leukodystrophy, is an inheritable disease caused by a decrease or loss of galactosyl ceramidase enzyme activity. This enzyme is important in growth and maintenance of myelin, and as such, Crab's disease is considered a demyelination disease. The electron micrograph shows a neuron lysosome with the accumulation of fibular material that has a counterclockwise rotation. Note that although 
Gaucher's disease and Crabbe's disease are lysosomal storage disease, the accumulation of tubular material within the inclusion bodies can be significantly different. Underscoring observations that inclusion material within lysosomal storage disease are not a uniform singular product and both have differing spatial orientations. Lysosomal storage diseases are associated with mutations in proteins involved in many different lysosomal functions. This can include trafficking of material within the endosome, endoplasmic reticulum, and Golgi apparatus, as well as processes involved in glycosylation and hydrolytic enzyme activity. The pink boxes highlight the progression from genetic mutation to impaired cellular function. The next two slides show some of the lysosomal storage diseases presented to veterinarians and some of the animal species that can manifest the disease. The genetic mutations and subsequent metabolic deficiencies for most lysosomal storage diseases are known, and as such, it should be a simple process to predict the clinical outcomes of the disease. Unfortunately, this is not the case for many lysosomal storage diseases, and indeed, the plethora of physiologic and anatomic aberrations makes the diagnosis of lysosomal storage diseases particularly challenging for the practicing veterinarian. As mentioned, the clinical presentation of lysosomal storage diseases can be complex and diverse. A common theme in the pathophysiology of many lysosomal storage diseases is the involvement of the central and peripheral nervous systems. Indeed, roughly two-thirds of all lysosomal storage diseases present with a progressive and devastating neurologic change. Clinical signs vary from loss of the higher levels of the cerebral function to significant deficits in proprioception, a hallmark of cerebellar involvement. The image demonstrates some of the observations associated with neurological injury in animals with Crabbe's disease. The picture on the left is a hound with profound hind leg paresis caused by demyelination of the neurons. Within the image on the right, the green arrow points out myelin degeneration characterized by fragmentation of the myelin, while the purple arrow shows a multinucleated giant cell, also known as a globoid cell, near the myelin debris. GM1 gangliosidosis is a lysosomal storage disease characterized by the reduction or loss of beta-galactosidase enzyme activity. This enzyme hydrolyzes the glycosidic bond and breaks down beta-galactosides into monosaccharides. This is important as a loss in this enzyme activity results in the accumulation of GM1 gangliosides in tissues. Pathologic changes of GM1 ganglioside accumulation affects many tissues and has a spectrum of clinical presentation. In people, the disease is categorized into three types. Type 1, or the infantile form of the disease, is the most severe form and is usually observed in children less than 6 months of age. Type 2 GM1 gangliosidosis, also known as late infantile or juvenile form, affects children between the ages of 18 months and 5 years of age. Finally, type 3 or the adult form of GM1 gangliosidosis is the mild form of the disease and is usually present in adolescents in their teenage years. The slides show three histologic micrographs. The top left demonstrates a swollen neuron with increased presence of granular cytoplasmic inclusion. The image on the right shows a digestion chamber, a histologic hallmark of Wallerian degeneration, a process also known as anterograde degeneration. This occurs when the axon is separated from the neuron cell body. Finally, the image on the bottom right displays the presence of a spheroid, an indicator of axon swelling with potential loss of myelin sheath. The image shows the accumulation of luxofast blue positive inclusion materials within the cytoplasm of the neuron. The images show linear and concentric pattern forming inclusion materials within the neuron lysosome. Neiman Pick's disease is a lysosomal storage disease associated with a reduction or loss of acid sphingomyelinase activity. 
In Neiman Pick type A disease, there is a loss in the ability to convert sphingomyelin into ceramide lipids. In contrast, type 3 Neiman Pick's disease is associated with dysregulation of cholesterol movement within the cell and the subsequent intracellular accumulation of cholesterol. Purkinje cells are important cells located within the layers of the cerebellar cortex and involved in the regulation of motor movement. In this histomicrograph, the Purkinje cells are seen as brown stain cells. Notice the relative paucity in the number of Purkinje cells. This dropout of Purkinje cells will lead to a discoordination of the movement in animals, a common clinical manifestation of Neiman Pick's disease. Other non-neurologic tissues are also affected by various types of lysosomal storage diseases which impairs the anatomic and physiologic functions of the tissues. Some of the commonly affected tissues and organs include the eye, spleen, liver, kidneys, collagen-rich tissues, and the musculoskeletal structures. Mucopolysaccharidosis is a condition in which there is a reduction or loss of alpha l iuronidase enzyme activity an enzyme that is needed to hydrolyze glucosaminoglycans into smaller components. Mucopolysaccharidosis in people is composed of three conditions, Hurler, hurler shea and Shea syndrome, with Hurler syndrome being the most severe manifestation of the disease. The image demonstrates some of the visual changes that are associated with feline mucopolysaccharidosis. The top left image demonstrates mild increase in corneal opacity. This is apparent by the reduced visualization of underlying uveal structures. The slide also shows increased vacuolation of keratinocytes and the optic nerve. GM1 gangliosides are also important constituents in extraneuronal tissue. Within the image on the left, figure B, demonstrates skeletal abnormalities of a three-month-old Portuguese water dog with GM1 gangliosidosis as compared to age match controls without the disease, figure A. Notice the vertebra are atrophic and appear shorter, as well as the intravertebral discs are dysplastic, having an irregular fragmented appearance. The image on the right highlights changes associated with feline mucopolysaccharidosis the articular surface of the cartilage has many erosions and is dysplastic. The histomicrograph shows the stroma of the valve cusps of the mitral valve infiltrated by vacuolated histiocytes. The images represent histomicrographs of the liver and spleen of a cat with Neiman Pick's disease. The splenocytes and hepatocytes have prominent intracellular inclusions that cause the cells to swell, leading to cellular dysfunction and subsequent tissue failure. Other ancillary tests can be employed to assist veterinarians in the diagnosis of lysosomal storage diseases. Some tests are more helpful than others. For instance, routine CBCs and serum chemistries are not very useful for identifying lysosomal storage diseases. In contrast, aspirates and biopsies are excellent diagnostic tools to help identify lysosomal storage diseases in animals. As examples, aspirates of the bone marrow, lymph node, spleen, or liver can be used to determine Neiman Pick's disease in cats. As well, biopsies of nerves identify inclusions within axons and ganglions and have been used to determine the presence of Neiman Pick's disease and mucopolysaccharidosis in people and animals. In addition, muscle biopsies are currently used to determine the presence of Pompe's disease. Similarly, Cerebral spinal fluid analysis can be used to identify lysosomal storage diseases and its involvement with the central nervous system. Finally, non-invasive diagnostic techniques such as urinalysis, radiographs, and more advanced imaging systems that include magnetic resonance can help in the diagnosis of lysosomal storage diseases. The image of a bone marrow aspirate of a person with Neiman Pick's disease showing enlarged vacuolated monocytes. Histomicrograph images of neurologic structures affected by different lysosomal storage diseases. 
The image on the left is a nerve biopsy from a person with mucopolysaccharidosis demonstrating an accumulation of inclusions within the axon of the peripheral nerve. The image on the right shows the ganglia within the myenteric plexus of the intestine. The enlarged neuron contains luxal fast blue staining intracytoplasmic material. Pompe's disease is associated with a reduction or loss of acid maltase activity, an enzyme needed to break down glycogen into glucose. The disease in people has three forms. The first type is the classical infantile form, and it occurs several months after birth and is often characterized by muscle weakness and heart defects. The second type is the non-classical infantile form. This disease usually presents at one year of age and has more neurological developmental changes than the classical infantile form of the disease. Finally, the third form of the disease is the late onset form and occurs in adolescence or adulthood and is similar to the classical infantile form but has milder symptoms. The image shows accumulation of glycogen within myocytes with varying amounts of cellular degeneration. Interestingly, the figure at the bottom right demonstrate marked myocyte degeneration and necrosis, an observation that often appears more frequently in type 1 muscle fibers. This is an angiogram of a patient with Pompe's disease. The glycogen storage disease causes weakness in the vessel muscle wall of the tunica media. The yellow arrow shows the bulging dilated vessel, which is also known as an aneurysm of the basilar artery. Urinalysis is a relatively simple diagnostic technique that measures metabolites excreted within the urine. Urine can be assessed by thin layer chromatography, identifying characteristic gel bands in animals with lysosomal storage diseases. Urine can also be quickly measured using a spot test. As an example, cats with feline mucopolysaccharidosis can have urine with metachromastic staining as a positive indicator of the disease. The magnetic resonance image highlights the midbrain of dogs with gangliosidosis. This disease is associated with atrophy of important structures of the brain and as such has adverse neurologic consequences for the dogs. For instance, the anterior commissure contains important fibers that connect the two cerebral hemispheres and are involved in pain sensation and chemoreception. The fornix, on the other hand, is associated with the hippocampus and required for recall memory, a process that remembers long-term information. An accurate and perhaps one of the best methods to determine the presence of lysosomal storage disease is to identify mutations in the genes that encode for the deficient protein or enzyme. The most common technique to examine changes in gene sequence is PCR. And second generation PCR techniques such as 454 pyrosequencing is being applied more frequently to assess lysosomal storage diseases in people and animals. Moreover, in veterinary medicine, it's particularly important to determine the presence of altered genes associated with lysosomal storage diseases, as this will determine whether line breeding of these animals should continue. The slides provides an example for the recommendation of using targeted gene testing in cats with severe feline mucopolysaccharidosis. Notably, the example highlights the judicial use of selective testing and not mass testing of all cats, as there is always a small risk of identifying false positive cats in each test. Finally, the last diagnostic techniques is postmortem and histopathologic assessment of tissue to identify lysosomal storage diseases in animals. The previous slides have shown many examples of using histopathology to visualize often marked changes in tissue morphology. The disadvantage of using gross pathology and histopathology to determine the presence of lysosomal storage diseases is that this occurs at the end of life and is such no benefit to the individual animal. This information, however, often assists in providing a definitive diagnosis of the disease. Treatment of lysosomal storage diseases in people has shown a significant improvement over the last several decades. Early treatment of lysosomal storage diseases was directed at palliative and supportive care and often included a multidisciplinary team approach with physicians and paramedical professionals. Newer forms of treatment are generally directed at replacing the deficient enzyme or protein to prevent the disease. 
Enzyme replacement therapy is the primary treatment for lysosomal storage diseases in people and is currently considered the standard of care. In this form of treatment, recombinant proteins are introduced to the patient, usually by intravenous route, and it is believed that the recombinant enzymes will be able to effectively metabolize accumulating macromolecules that are pathologic to the cell. A limitation of this therapy is the inability of the recombinant enzymes to cross the blood-brain barrier, and as such cannot penetrate into the central nervous system. This is unfortunate, as indicated earlier, approximately two-thirds of all lysosomal storage diseases have neurologic involvement. Therefore, clinical trials are exploring intrathecal and intracerebral routes to administrate these recombinant enzymes. It is important to realize that enzyme therapy can limit the progression of disease but cannot reverse the damage from the material already accumulated. This makes early diagnosis of lysosomal storage diseases very important. Hemopoietic stem cell transfer requires the transplantation of cells that produce the deficient enzymes to compatible recipients. Unlike enzyme replacement therapy, hemopoietic cell transfer is useful for a limited number of lysosomal storage diseases. Pharmacological chaperone therapy is directed at improving aberrant protein modifications and this can occur from failed protein degradation or intracellular trafficking. In general, these chaperones are small proteins that help correct improper protein folding and improve intracellular trafficking. Proteostasis regulators are products that improve cellular processes needed for proper cell functions that are associated with substrate metabolism. Substrate reduction therapy, on the other hand, is directed at reducing biosynthetic byproducts of metabolism. Gene therapy is aimed at introducing the gene that produces the defective enzymes to target cells using replicating viral vectors. This therapy has a lot of potential for providing long-term therapy for patients, as the gene incorporated into the correct cell type could produce the enzyme over the lifetime of the individual. Notably, Gene therapy can replace the deficient enzyme following a single treatment, and this is a major advantage as compared to other therapies such as enzyme replacement therapy, which requires continuous treatment during the lifetime of the patient. In addition, preliminary results indicate that only small increases in enzyme activity will improve the clinical symptoms of individuals with lysosomal storage diseases. Treatment of patients with lysosomal storage diseases is very costly. The slide shows the cost in 2006 of enzyme replacement therapy for a single individual and on an annual basis. The right column shows a very rough approximation of the cost which may occur at present time following inflation. From the previous slide, it's apparent that the latest treatments of lysosomal storage diseases is costly and prohibitive in veterinary medicine. And as such, the cost of diagnosis and treating companion animals with lysosomal storage diseases ranges from $300 to $4,500 per animal as the treatment is being directed only for supportive and palliative care. Moreover, and as a note, identifying animals with lysosomal storage disease is an important consideration in veterinary medicine for two main reasons. The first, the owner needs to be informed that their animal has a non-curative disease and this will require substantive, supportive care of the animal, a situation that can produce emotional and financial hardships on many families. Secondly, determining lysosomal storage diseases in breeding lines of animals is critical, as prevention of further breeding is an important intervention to reduce the propagation of the disease in animal populations. The next two slides highlights possible future treatments for lysosomal storage diseases in veterinary medicine. Some experiments are underway in companion animals to examine the use of gene therapy to treat lysosomal storage diseases. One study used a viral vector expressing beta-galactosidase to treat cats with GM1 gangliosidosis. The treatment appeared successful as the cats administered the viral vector expressing the enzyme lived much longer than non-treated control cats. The cats had excellent expression of the enzyme, as visualized by the blue staining throughout the brain and into the spinal cord. This result indicates that gene therapy may be a potential form of treatment for lysosomal storage diseases in companion animals. 
It's unknown, however, what the cost of such a treatment could be for the pet owner. This presentation examined common lysosomal storage diseases in veterinary medicine, a collection of diseases that are chronic, debilitating, and fatal. Various diagnostic techniques observed in concert with the clinical manifestations of the disease are required to determine a definitive diagnosis of the disease. And although treatment of lysosomal storage diseases in people is making significant gains, treatment in companion animals has been limited to supportive and palliative care. The next two slides provides a list of references used for this presentation. Many of these references are excellent and can be used as a resource to further your understanding of lysosomal storage diseases in both people and animals.